Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction for you guys. Today guys, we're checking out the second episode of Netflix's Dragon Age Absolution. This is Season 1, Episode 2 of the show, The Will of the Maker. I like that title. So the first episode, A Woman Unseen, was a great episode in regards of it wasn't wasting any time introducing us to Miriam, the main character, along with the rest of the characters we're going to be following in terms of this team going after this blood infused ring like this blood magic infused ring and it's in this of course temple this city that miriam was from and it sounds like based off the first episode that she was enslaved there or prisoned there or something like that she never wanted to go back and so hira i think it's how to pronounce her name or hira Hira, i think it's hira but she recognized her because she came face to face with her after a, a while of being away from each other and they've had some sort of past relationship and she wasn't fully outright like telling Miriam the whole story about what exactly the mission was that she was being recruited for. And she's like, I never want to go back to that place where this ring, where this item is, is hidden away. I, I never want to go back there. And ultimately figuring out that she has to go in herself. Like she's the one who has to actually go in to get the rest of them in to complete the mission, the task that they're on, because there's no other way really to get in. So unfortunately she has to do the one thing she didn't want to do. She killed some, th like, three guys, I think three at this point, yes, to get the to get to the doorway to let them in. So there's been some deaths, and clearly there's a lot of past and some messed up shit with this place that they're in right now. And, of course, they end with, okay, let's go, and then it cuts the credits. So the mission is about to start, so I'm excited to get to this episode to see what they show us, because I'm assuming things are not going to go well, because this is episode two out of six, so the mission just can't be complete. Okay, okay, we're done, bye. Like, there, there's more story to tell, so I'm curious to see what's going to happen. So here we go, guys. Episode 2, The Will of the Maker. Let's go. Oh, okay. I was like, where are we at? Okay. When the truth is, we possess only a fraction of the power we once held. Hmm. There's so many secrets locked away in the past. You know, if you're so desperate to dig through the past, you could get rid of the slave corpses Marconius IV put in the walls. That bastard. Spirits, demons, they're all dangerous. A history lesson about that thing isn't worth the risk. That must be it. Yeah. The Divine himself asked me to research the Circulum Infinitus. It is supposed to bring the dead back to life, Tasia. Just as that's not before. good, though. Maker's breath. Don't you think that's worth investigating? I changed. Whoa. Rezarin Anosi, Magister of the Tevinter Imperium. I am called Memory. The Circulum. He doesn't seem excited to see that. Last and greatest work of Magister Amelia Pappas. I will not kill one person to resurrect another. I need a way to use mm. the circulum without spilling blood. Just because something hasn't been done doesn't mean it can't be done. And well, that's true, but you're so playing with fire. True, but you do not comprehend the... We didn't ask what you thought, spirit. Tell us who else wants the circulum. Where, boy? Memory boy. unheeded can only become enmity. Answer the question! What the fuck happened? I think it might transform. It still can't cross the circle. Some tells me it might. Oh, it can summon its own friends. Of course. So I'm trying to figure out, is this, are these good people? Are they bad guys? I don't know. Yeah, he's out. Oh shit. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Probably not scared of you. Ooh. So they basically brought back the spirit that's gonna take the ring, I'm guessing. Ooh. Like we didn't pull her with him. Mm. If that artifact is a threat to Defender, we need to destroy it. Mm. It's not the artifact that's dangerous. Protection spell, clearly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Into four oh, it's actually going through it, okay. Roland, there are men on the inside. <laughs> wow. Hero and Quidian, head for the cathedral. We need to keep those people inside for Oh, I thought they said don't drop her. Visibility. Nice. Someone's you. coming. Oh, good kill her people. Okay. Okay. Hey, I don't she's not gonna kill her. I don't there? think. I was right. I predicted in the episode one review that we were gonna see flashbacks potentially in this episode. A slave should never harm her betters. Her betters? Oh, she was a slave, okay. Well, he's under so much pressure to figure out the circulum. 
Neb, I worry that he'll be tempted to do something dangerous. I mean, he's cute, but yikes. Let's stay focused. Stay focused. The plan, the mission. Shit. Get away from that. Oh, boy. The cook. <sighs> Why are you hiding from them? <laughs> oh. Slave owns nothing. Is nothing. And hiding won't help you, so... There's my daddy a thief of an apprentice. Work faster, or we're all dead. Exactly, work faster. Come on. I told you, there's no one else here. It don't matter how special an elf you are, you're still mm. too. Don't do that. An assassin must know their rules. I believe I found what you're looking for. Really? You're an ass. No. You are an- Miriam, you're being an ass right now, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You could have saved her. Whatever. What what's happening here? Whoa. I don't know what was happening there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Almost hoping you wouldn't be able to do that. Holy shit, are you I didn't expect him to be the betrayer. I predicted this. Seriously. Stop him. Stop him. Come on. What? Oh. I've wanted so much to rescue the dead that I've lost sight of the living. Oh boy. See, I predicted someone's going to betray the team, but I wasn't expecting the guy running the team. And they showed up together in the first episode. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Oh, fuck! Oh, God! Ooh! What are you doing? Oh? No, it's not, but she had to do it. Divine Marconius built that vault to be a last resort. Its security system isn't meant to stop intruders. It's meant to stop a full-scale coup. Huh. Huh. Exactly. Huh. <laughs> exactly. Run. <laughs> well, that was handy. Okay, good. Uh-oh. What happened? You don't know what Where? happened. Oh, my God. She didn't do it. No, no, she didn't know. Oh, no. Wow is the only word that comes to mind because the first episode was a great way to introduce us to these characters, this world, and to get right to the storyline, right? Get right to the main point of the whole story about this mission, these characters, Miriam being, of course, the main focus. But literally this second episode decided to just amp it up to fucking 11 on many different things. And I predicted a couple of things that kind of came true. I figured something was going to happen that made it to the point where the mission was not going to be completed, obviously. We have six episodes. This is episode two. So not like episode five or whatever. This is episode two out of six. The mission was not going to be completed. I wasn't expecting some of the things that happened, but I also predicted somebody, somebody was going to betray the team. I was not predicting Fairbanks, the leader of the team, the whole reason this thing was put together in the first place, the guy who was putting all this together, for him to be the one. No, it kind of makes sense. We've seen stories like that before where a team gets put together to go on a mission and the leader of the team is revealed. But I wasn't expecting in this instance for him to be the one that is the betrayer. I wasn't expecting that, especially at that moment when we get down to the chamber where it was and it's floating there. Of course, we've seen the, the opening scene of this episode with those two new characters. We see it there and then we get a lot of information there, which I'll talk about that in a second. But when, when Hera opened the domed like barrier essentially over it and they went through like a curtain essentially like just opening up like a slice of it like they, they kind of slice it open i wasn't expecting him to pull out a, a knife you know a dagger and stab her in the back and then there's a little fight going on and then he actually dies he ends up dying i'm pretty sure he's dead i think that that, that was the implication there at the end but i was not prepared for him because i wasn't expecting Hera to be the one to betray i was thinking roland could be the one you know, potentially, don't know, but Miriam was with him at the beginning of the show, so maybe she trusts him enough to where that wouldn't happen, but I don't know, it could p possibly, but I wasn't thinking Fairbanks, I wasn't thinking the guy who was running this thing, but maybe he's not dead, 
I don't know. Because they made a point about this ring, this, uh, this device, this blood magic infused weapon, essentially. They made a point that it's very powerful. Because the opening of the episode had two new characters. They seem to have some sort of relationship. Um, and she's to protect him. And he's some sort of mage or something, a sorcerer or something. And his whole point, he's trying to figure out if there's a way to use it without killing. Because I guess the whole point about being blood-infused magic, essentially, is that in order to bring someone back, you have to take someone's life. It's like So there's there's kind of a bargaining thing or kind of a, um, a level of balance, if you will, to where if you want to use it, you have to use it a certain way. And it's, of course, dark magic, blood-infused magic, so it has to be certain criteria. So he brings forth a spirit now she says well spirit demon same thing you know you gotta be careful i'm, I'm gonna protect you and he's like that's it i'm bringing a spirit i'm 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 bringing forth a spirit not a demon ultimately it became a demon <laughs> it transformed into a demon but we have this spirit that has seen everything that's kind of transpired in that room and then when he's i'm assuming gets a he notified of the ring in question, the actual weapon itself, I'm calling, it's kind of a weapon, I'm guessing, because how powerful this thing is, but pointing to that, it's like, well, so you were around when that was created, and he's like, <gasps> and then he's like, you know, you, you don't know what you're toying, like, toying with, and the, the, the power of this, you have no idea, we also got more information before he actually popped up the spirit, about that the, all the magic or whatever, that was, is within the temple that they're at, is that, it's like they have one fourth of what they used to have. So there's like a lot of things they've lost over time or something to that effect. So things have changed over time in regards to magic, but he, he was very powerful, especially when that spirit turned into a demon and realizing he, he take the ring for himself, take the, 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 the weapon for himself. That's when we got to see some fights because he was stuck within a barrier when he turned to a demon and he uh, brought forth other demons. And we got to see some fight going on there with these two new characters. And, of course, we see the fact there is a connection between uh, him, the new character, him, and Miriam. Because Miriam had some flashbacks, which I also predicted in episode one, that there's such a tie to this place for her that we're probably going to see flashbacks. And I was correct. So, Miriam had some flashbacks of her being young. She was slaved. So, she was not slave. She was a slave there. She wasn't like a prison. It was a sl she was a slave. And this woman... I'm assuming Miriam killed her. I'm not 100% sure, but because they kept like, we kept seeing most of her, but they're cutting off her face. We don't really get to see who she is. We get to hear her. And she's saying, you know, a slave owns nothing. You're lesser than blah, blah, blah. Like basically just every little thing that this woman can say to tear it down. And it seems like this woman was some, some, doing some sort of magic when Miriam was older, like right, right around now where she is now age wise. Look like at least she looked the same as she does now in the, in the, present in this flashback but later we get to see where this woman's doing magic and something's happening and Miriam I guess loses control and she has blood all over her hands blood all over the daggers some people are dead and that's where it kind of ties into this guy I think he's trying to bring someone back that Miriam killed and his whole point of bringing back that spirit going back to that point was that he was trying to find a way like even though it's, it's, even though it's never been done there's got to be a way for me to use this thing without killing anybody like even though he's trying to use it not necessarily for good. He's using it for selfish reasons. He's not, he doesn't want to go the route of killing, but see, I think this thing is so powerful and so godlike that anybody's going to do anything to get a hold of it. I mean, literally that spirit will turn into a demon and decide, okay, I'll take it. And then Roland, even though, not Roland, sorry, Fairbanks, I guess, I'm trying to get, so I get to use these names, but Fairbanks I didn't expect him to turn, but maybe he was willing to do whatever it took, which is betray the team and betray someone who was actually trying to, you know, help in the mission. He was, he was willing to kill to get this thing. So I think it's always going to be a thing to where no one could, bet I think that what they're going to basically imply and what they kind of imply with the spirit is that no one can use this thing properly and use it without it being used for bad like in terms of like no one can no one could properly use this thing and be all good like it just can't be done i think that's what they're kind of implying in this so roland and i forget that guy and he <laughs> definitely interesting character but they both walk in on seeing fairbanks dead 
and Miriam uh, kneel down next to him. And the implication with it cutting off is that they think that she killed him. Not the case at all. Like, he betrayed Hera. Hera, of course, attacked back. And then set, like, set forth some sort of defense mechanism that's going to kill everybody in the palace. <laughs> it's going to kill everybody. Because she had, to, she had to do it because she was stuck down there. Because she she's pretty much, she was almost dying in the process because of, of what Fairbanks did to her. So now the whole entire place is uh, under attack. So hopefully we'll get past this point because even that one guy, not Roland, but the other guy, I forget his name, but he made a point like, well, what if she turns on us? So he was kind of skeptical about her, about Miriam. So we'll see what happens. One final note I want to make about this is, well, first of all, the action was great as always uh, in the show. The action was great, but it's Miriam's decision about that little girl. That essentially is also enslaved, just like she was when she was younger, of course, and at some point she got out. But the little girl came into the little area where she, Miriam was supposed to stay there and not leave because they needed access to get out when the mission's done. The little girl went in there, and here comes some sort of cook or whatever, and she's she drags her back. Miriam gave her up. I think it kind of goes to show two things. One... Miriam is so traumatized and so emotionally damaged because of what she went through being in this place and not being back and just bringing back so many memories and thinking back on all these things. But two, Miriam made the wrong choice because Miriam could have easily killed this woman and took her out. She's like, I don't care. I don't care how special you are. This woman was going back to torture that little girl and Miriam allowed it to happen. And, and I, I don't know if we're going to, Maybe in episode three or whatever, Miriam was going to save that girl or whatever and kill that cook or whoever. I don't know, but I hope we get some sort of resolve to that because I get it in the moment. Miriam's not completely thinking, but she's she's like thinking back on so many different things. I mean, she was flashing back to stuff as she was talking to that woman or that woman was pretty much talking down to her, but she gave up that little girl to her. And I feel like she made the wrong choice. She clearly made the wrong choice. So I'm hoping that gets some sort of fixed in the, in the future, but they had a good plan. Unfortunately, it just fell apart all because of the fact that, well, first of all, Fairbanks was screwing up on getting the door open. He took way longer than he was supposed to. And then of course he betrays and everything's just going downhill. <laughs> so I'm expecting some more chaos in the next episode. I mean, literally the first episode, like I said, was a great introduction. The second episode was bonkers as hell. And I was quite surprised by some of the things, and I'm really enjoying the show so far. So I'm curious to know what you guys thought about this episode of Dragon Age Absolution. I'm curious to know your thoughts. Whatever thoughts you have, guys, please let me know in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's been a, it's been fun. It's been fun. And the fact is, we still have four episodes to go. So I'm excited to see what happens next because, I mean, so much stuff has already happened, and we're not even halfway through the show. So there's definitely a lot more to look forward to, and I'm hoping it's going to stick the landing because I feel like now with these first two episodes, they've done a, gr a lot of good build up. So please continue the momentum and give us something great in these last four episodes. And hopefully we get more. Because, I mean, at this point, I'm not even, like I said, halfway through the, the season. But I want a season two now. Announce a season two. We need more. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.